despite the fighting round it and one or two attacks actually inside it, Srinigar looks remarkably peaceful. But the houseboats on the river are empty and most of them seem to be to let. The Indian authorities have clamped a curfew on their territory and checkpoints have been set up on main roads leading into the capital. Nothing is left to chance, although the Indians claim that the infiltrators are clearly distinguishable from the local Kashmiris. John Edwards talked to Mr. Ghulam Kala of the Opposition Action Committee. Have you any views on the way the Indian Army has acted in this present situation? Indian army at certain places has acted very badly against the population of this place. The people say that at certain places it was Indian army which set fire to certain villages. Although they say there were no infiltrators in those areas. Do you actually believe uh, in the Indian claim that Pakistan has brought infiltrators into Kashmir? I can't say anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Would, would uh, our sources are only two. Either the Pakistan radio or the Indian radio. Pakistan radio says, no, we have nothing to do with it. Indian radio says, no, it is Pakistan. Who have come here. Do you believe either of those versions? I, uh, uh, we can't say anything about their versions. They have been contradicting each other for the last so many years about these border skirmishes particularly when there used to be this uh, when they used to say that there has been some uh, this uh, ceasefire violation there used to be different version and we have never been able to see which is the correct version why has india do you think refused a plebiscite in kashmir it, uh, this question you should put to india i can't say but I can tell you that for the last 18 years it has been uh, put in the cold storage. Why don't people here then like India? Because they have not been able to rule properly. That is the, uh, that is the main reason. And that, that has been admitted even by very big Indians, very great Indians who are in, uh, at the helm of affairs. What has gone, what has been the main objections to Indian rule here? The main objection has been that they have been not ruling it in a democratic way. For the last 18 years we have seen no democracy in Kashmir. How have the Indians been treating the local population in Kashmir? At this time, at this time they are practically treating us as Algerians who are treated by, by, by French. Uh, Minus the fact that we are not behaving like Algerians. We want that this issue, Kashmir issue, should be solved in a non-violent, non-communal manner and in a peaceful way. The United Nations have the thankless task of trying to hold the ring. They have no forces here, only 45 officer observers. Their job is to investigate complaints and this year they've been getting more than ever before more in one month than in many previous complete years. But they can't take action, only report back to Secretary General Utant in New York. Does today's news of India's moves across the ceasefire line mean the UN will soon be engaged in yet another major peacekeeping operation, like Cyprus and the Congo? Or will the two sides move back in time from the brink of war?